Have you ever made a model, select certain parts, delete it, save, close the app, come back and figure out that you just deleted the most important part of your model that wasn't supposed to be deleted. And in some cases you might have to redo the whole model again and this can be very tiring. And that is where procedural modeling comes in. And one of the things that actually makes procedural modeling make sense is selection. Selection is one of the basic ways that we interact with 3D models. And in most cases, you actually need selection to make models. And these can come in extremely handy as this is more like the most primary way that you create 3D objects. And today we're going to take a look at how selections work with geometry node alongside with the comparisons of how this works across different tools. And with that said, let's get right into it. Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're taking a look at the art of selection. Now this selection is targeted to those who are thinking about working with the geometry nodes and it is a very simple and basic explanation of how selecting within the geometry node actually works, especially if you're thinking about making procedural models. This is for those who are new to Blender geometry nodes, those coming from Houdini to Blender or in your DCC app and you're coming over to Blender and you would like to take advantage of the geometry node. This is just a very basic explanation of how you can make procedural selections and use this to drive your procedural models. We already know selections like this. Now by default, you can select an object, but in terms of modeling, you need to select component. So to do component selection in Blender is the simplest pressing the tab key and you can find the component selections from here. So you want to select vertices, of course you can. You want to select edges, of course you can. And if you like to select faces, yes you can. So you can select multiple faces and you can assign operations based on the faces that you have selected. And if you're thinking about storing this selection, that is where groups come in. So we can select these two points and we can go over to the vertex group, click on the plus sign and assign this as a selection and the same thing happens here we can also make another selection right here make another selection click on the plus sign and assign this now the reason why you make this is so that you can store the selections and use them every single time when you're making models in this case if we click on this select you notice that we selected what we had before if we go over to the first group and we click on the word select you can see that now for those coming from Maya and you're wondering, okay, how does this actually make sense? If you're coming from Maya, how this works is also very similar. So for example, if we go over to the faces and you make one selection, make another selection, you can go over to the create section and create a set. Now with this set, once you're within your object mode, you can go over to the set, right click and select the set members. And this way you can have this object selected. And if you're thinking about making models or doing stuff with this, you can proceed to do all of that with just this particular selection that you have right here. And the same thing is similar with those coming from Houdini. And just like what we have in Blender, Houdini has something called groups. And to select groups is very simple. Click on the select tool, select a certain part that you would like to store as groups and click on the group button to store this as group. Now, because Houdini is extremely procedural, it simply makes your art of selection extremely easy. Now, one of the things that Houdini has, the Blender doesn't have at least yet, is you being able to see the face numbering. Now, of course, there's definitely going to be ways around that, but at this point, you can't see it. And this is where selecting things for procedural modeling becomes a little bit difficult for Blender users. So in this case, if you're looking at Houdini and you turn this on, which is your face numbering, you can tell the numbers on the object. So I can simply go over here and have the selection and you can tell what we have right about here. So you can see we have this as number two, number five, number one, and the same thing applies to the vertices. So if you click on that, you can also tell the numbers. So where this comes in very handy is here. That at this point, if you have a simple group, go over, select the extrude node, click to make sure that you're looking at the extrude node and you can click on the drop down and add the group. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add this group right inside here. Click on drop down, add that group, and that way you can see we have this. So we have this insert and we have the distance right about this point, which makes sense. Now, how you can also do that in Blender is slightly the same. And slightly the same in the sense that if you like to do this, you need to go over to the geometry node and within the geometry node, you need to create a brand new node. And from there, you can start doing some of these things. So first off, we're going to do a simple extrude. So let's do that extrude right there. And we can extrude the mesh, hold on Alt, so wiggle that out and drop that right in. And we would like this to drive from a selection. So we click select, drop that right here, have this object selected, click on this button, click here one more time, and we can select a group and scale this. And because the selection which we did is not necessarily a face selection, 
rather a vertex selection, we can now switch this to vertices and we will be getting something like that. Now, of course, there are ways to work around this, like I mentioned. By default, if you start working with it in this form, this is basically what you get. You can switch over to the next one and you'd also get exactly the same result. So the question is, how do you work with this that is a bit similar to what you have in Houdini? So if we jump back into Houdini to take a look at something so that you guys can see how this one works with Houdini, if we were trying to extrude part, let's set this over to zero and set this to one. If we're trying to extrude part, instead of having the groups there, we can simply tell Houdini that what we would like to do is to extrude the very first phase. And we're going to enter the value of one. And that way, this is the only phase that gets extruded. If we would like to extrude number four, we can of course go ahead and do that. So I can click right here and enter the value of four, spacebar, tap four on the keyboard, and that would extrude that. So let's see what we have here. So if we click on this button, turn this on, all right, so that value says number four, this is number one, this is number five. So we can have that and I can go over here, spacebar five, and you can see this right about here. So this simply means the value that you feed into the extrude node is the value coming from the parent node. And how this ties up in Blender is similar. So instead of doing, you know, the whole thing that we did earlier, let's get a brand new scene and take a look at this. So instead of doing all of that, we can have this object selected, go over to the geometry node, click on new, and then we can bring in the extrude mesh. So with the extrude mesh right in here, we can go ahead and connect that. You notice that it extrudes all sides, but we'll like to simply make a simple selection. Now, one thing to keep in mind, like I mentioned earlier, if you have this object ringed right here, you notice it says you have six faces, but once you ring this into this part, you notice that the faces increases to 30. So what we want to do is to make a selection from the six faces we had and decide which of these ones will be extruded. And to do that is super simple. You can choose to use a color ramp. By all means, simply do that if you want. But in this case, since we would like to select things one after the other, instead of randomly selecting things based off a particular value that exists within the color spectrum, then we need to use a compare node. So how this works is very simple. We all have this indexed. So what we need to do is to drag in an index node. So we're going to get the index node and plug that right in here. And what we're telling Blender is to take a look at this parent node via the index and select anyone that is equal to the number that we have here. Remember, when we had this connected over to this point, we had a value of six. But now if we connect this, you notice we have a value of 10. So that simply means, like we mentioned with Houdini, is the parent node that you need to look up for you to feed a particular value to the descending node. And that is exactly the same thing that happens right here. So remember, we had this as six. So what we need to do is from here, if we have anything that has a value of zero, we should account for one phase, one, we should account for the second phase. Then you get the gist, two, three, four, and five. That is the part that we like to extrude. So we can now extrude based of that part. If we like to select multiple parts, what we could do is this. We could go all the way back and we could tell the compare node that at any time, if we're looking at something that is less or equal to a particular number, that it should extrude that part. So let's just drag this down a little bit. So we're looking at the value of zero and we're looking at the value of one. So is it less than one? Yes, which is zero. And is it equal to one? Yes, which is one. If we go over to two, so is it less than zero? Yes. Is it less than one? Yes. And is it two? Yes. And the same thing happens. We can do a greater or equal to sign and you can also see the same thing. So is it greater than two and all that stuff. And this way is how you can make some multiple selection. Now with this selection in place, there is now a lot of things that you can do, especially if you're thinking about working procedurally or creating procedural models. So now that you have the gist of how the selection actually works, you can now go ahead and start doing some stuff. A very simple one that you can do is the delete node. So just like we've explained and just like how it works in Houdini, the delete node also takes a look at the parent node and from the parent node, you can feed in the values that you like the delete node to actually delete. And the same thing that happens in Houdini is the very same thing that happens right here in Blender. And by all means, if you're using the delete geometry, you can choose to delete several things. You want to delete points? Of course you can. And you can use this to delete several points if you want. At the same time, if you like to delete edges, you can also do that. And if you're also thinking about deleting faces, 
you can also do this as well. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if you're working with nodes like the extrude mesh, the extrude mesh node itself also has a couple of group selections. And how to make sense of this is this easy. So I'm just gonna make a copy of this, Shift D and drop that right here. And once I drop this, you will notice that we have all of this scattered around. Now, one of the things you might also want to pay attention to is this particular button that declares it to extrude individuals. So once I turn that off, you notice that it doesn't extrude individuals, you know, it just simply extrudes by the side. The same thing happens with this other one. If you turn this off, you notice that it just simply extrudes by the side as well. And if you're coming from Houdini, you probably know that that is also something that exists because at this point, if you select the extrude button, you can choose to extrude connected components or individual elements. And this can give you varying results depending on what you want to do. And just like Houdini, if you are working with extrude meshes, the extrude mesh has output groups. And in this case, we're looking at two output groups, the top and the side. So with the top section, you can use this to drive the selection. And once you use this to drive the selection, it simply means that once you start extruding, only the top sections extrude. And if you choose to drive this with the side, you would also notice that only the side sections extrude. And if we turn this off and do that, you can also get some very interesting results with it. So what this means is at several instances, you might need to use these groups or selections or group selections to drive certain things. And this can come in very handy, especially if you're trying to create things like tables, you know, tops and all that. And you like to drive the scale of the object from a pivotal point like this. One more thing that I believe lots of you guys will have questions about is the inset node. Now the inset node itself doesn't exist by definition, but there are ways around it. And to explain how the inset node works, we need to move over to Maya to take a simple look. So right here in Maya, if we create a simple cube and then we choose to right click, go over to face, click, and then click on extrude. One thing which I'd like you guys to notice is this, that by default in Maya, there's no inset button, which makes it a better tool to actually explain this. So with the extrude options right here, if you go ahead and offset it, this is how you create an insertion. Now, once you create an insertion like this, click on the extrude one more time to create some thickness. And this way is a perfect idea of how you can create inserts. So shipping that same idea back here into Blender is super interesting. So for us to actually create some sort of insertion, what we need to do is get rid of this. I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of this and pipe this up to this one. And we will take a look at this by simply turning on the wireframe. So let's go ahead and turn on the wireframe right here and you guys can see it. So by default, what we will need to do is to scale the independent faces. Now you can select these faces by simply using the set of tools that we've just explored, or you can select them by using the extrude group selection, which are these ones here. So to guess at it, let's go ahead and grab ourselves a scale element and I'm going to click and drag out and connect that scale element right here. So if we like to simply scale just the top, we can click and drag and drop that top right over here. And once we do that and we start scaling this, you would notice that the scaling is happening based on the original offset that we have here. So if I set this offset to zero, you can now notice that we have some beautiful insertions right here that only exist on the top group. Unlike what you have in Houdini, where you have options to actually turn on the front, the back, and also the side group. So with these groups selected, what you can now do is to make copies. So we can go ahead and hold on Shift, Tab D on the keyboard, drag this in right here, and we can start extruding this. We could also drive a certain form of selection across. So if we come through and do a simple extrude, you notice everything extrudes, but what we want to extrude is the same top selection that we had before. So that way we can have a better, or should I say a perfect extrusion. You can go ahead and do some more stuff with this. So we can actually go ahead and do a simple copy and paste. We'll simply hit Shift and D on the keyboard, drag this right here, and you can proceed to do the very same thing as well. So you can have that selection as well, and you can proceed to do the very same thing. So hold on Shift on the keyboard, tap D and do it one more time. And this way you can start creating some very crazy and interesting looking patterns. 
Now, this idea is perfect if you're just thinking about creating procedural models. And by all means, if you're also thinking about deleting certain parts, you can, of course, use the delete node, just like we mentioned earlier. And you can use that to delete certain selections as well. So this is more like it. There are tons of possibilities that Blender actually ships in terms of procedural modeling. And in this case, if you're just getting started with geometry node, procedural modeling, and you're thinking about how you can explore some of these things and create some amazing stuff for yourself, this is definitely something that you can consider looking at. There's a beautiful set of add-ons that currently exist for Blender. And there's this beautiful one, which I believe is for free, that allows you to bring in your procedural models from Blender over to Unreal Engine and use this for your game development. So for those who are thinking about exploring some of these things, you can simply download a fresh copy of Blender and start playing with it and do some amazing stuff. And by all means, practice as much as you can. And also don't shy away from using other 3D apps to actually understand how some of these things work, especially if you're thinking about getting a well-grounded idea about some parts of modeling. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.